some of the Biden classified documents uh, were about Ukraine, uh, which brings us to our next next piece of news. Uh, let's, let's roll the clip here of the po uh, Polish prime minister warning of World War Three. Ukraine's defeat may become a prelude to World War Three. Therefore, today, there is no reason to block support for Kiev, to procrastinate. Thus, I call for decisive actions by German government on all sorts of weapons to be delivered to Ukraine. Yeah, so this is, uh, they're, they're calling for an increase in tanks, by the mm -hmm. way, that has uh, induced somewhat of a debate uh, from Germany, because Germany has to give permission, the way this works, for their tanks to be sent to mm -hmm. Ukraine. If, if it's a German tank, then they have to give permission. It so seems it's, it's leaning in the direction that they're going to do it. So, so here's Ben Wallace, the British Defense Secretary, um, who, who says there's a debate in Germany at the moment about whether a tank is an offensive weapon or a defensive weapon. Well, it depends on what you're using it for. If you're using it to defend your country, I would wager that is a defensive weapon system. This is all coming um, on the heels of that just absolutely awful uh, strike on the apartment building. We have some footage of that. We can uh, roll right now from Reuters. Uh, look at that. Um, how do you pronounce the name of the city, by the way? I don't, it's- Dnipro? It, yeah, Dnipro. So, yeah. yeah, Dnipro. So it's just incredible um, scene right there. There's actually video, you see that yellow uh, kitchen that it just zoomed in on? Mm -hmm. uh, some news outlets got video from that kitchen before the strike of a girl's birthday party. Right, right just, blowing out of candles. And, and you can see that it's the same yellow yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty striking uh, juxtaposition of, of how life can be so normal at one moment and then uh, devastated in the next with these uh, technologies that exist right now from distances people can be struck. And you also had at the World Economic Forum, you had Joe Manchin saying that the United States commitment uh, w to this war was indefinite. Uh, you had the Finnish prime minister saying that uh, the only way you know, that the only way they, this war could end is if Russia loses it. Mm -hmm. uh, that you 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 have basically a, a global elite consensus um, uh, on the in the West that negotiations around a ceasefire and talks to end this war are just not worth considering. Like it's just it's just not it's not not something that is going to be on a panel mm -hmm. at Davos and kicked around as an idea that anybody should take seriously. It's quite striking. Like the the only uh, you know, the, the only possible strategy, it seems like, for the West here is relentless uh, support of Ukraine until Russia is defeated. Right. Uh, that's, uh, and w without kind of anybody presenting a picture of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that actually happen? Well, and you'll have people like the Finnish prime minister say, well, the, Russia could just leave. Yeah. That, that is true. Yeah, you know, Russia could indeed leave, and I think that they should leave. I yeah. don't think they should have invaded in the first place, but we're also on planet Earth. They're not going to just pack up and leave. There is no realistic indication of that, and they continue to act. Their strategy is built around exactly that notion that someday uh, the Russians can be induced to just pack up and leave. And, uh, you know, short of nuclear war, it's incredibly difficult in the real world to envision a scenario. And that doesn't mean appeasement. It really doesn't need to, it doesn't necessarily mean appeasement. But the solution cannot be a long drawn out quagmire that's much better for defense contractors than it is for people living in the region. Right. I mean, it's insane. Right, the strategy is insane. Yeah, because what they're really calling for is basically a, an endless kind of low grade war. Right, and because right. they're fine with it now. Because they make a bunch of money off of it, and it allows them to um, be, do the sort of theatrical warmongering on uh, the, the sort of campaign stage. It allows them to funnel money to people who funnel money back to them. And uh, it seems like an all-around win-win. Um, and, you know, obviously, obviously, nobody would disagree that there's a strategic importance of Ukraine to the West, um, that this is a, a, a incredible, immoral devastation of, of innocent people and of civilians, and that uh, what, what Vladimir Putin is doing is an atrocity and is incredibly wrong. Um, but again, if you live in the world, in the real world, it doesn't mean you just hope and, and pay defense contractors enough money that Vladimir Putin says, I'm out. Right. And, and it, it seems like both sides are kind of comfortable with this low-grade war that's going to leave 
you know, thousands dead every single year right. and, and make reconstruction extraordinarily difficult because you'll continue to have attacks like the one you just saw in Dnipro. And Putin is just fine with it, too, I think, because the, the, big, the big risk for Putin at this point, because his, his main goal, basically, of installing a puppet regime in, in Kiev has failed. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't want to come out a loser. He wants to be able to declare victory somehow. And so if the war never ends, then he, then he never loses. Yep. So, he, so for that reason, he'd be okay you know, with basically keeping this war that was going on in the Donbass starting in 2014 going basically the rest of our lives and, we, then, and then some. But that's another really good point, which is if you want regime change in Russia, you can surely change the regime fine. Let's say you have you wave your magic wand and you do something extra judicial and you just change the regime, whatever, everything's fine. Or that's the outcome of a really of a, a massive war that's waged. Um, that doesn't erase sentiments in Russia and it doesn't erase sen sentiments in the Donbass in Ukraine that are going to continue to be seeds of tension and turmoil over this the, the sort of uh, complications of this this region and the the battles, you know, like I, it, we can all agree um, about where we think the, the boundaries of Ukraine should be. Um, we can all agree what is an illegal incursion. That doesn't change the reality that you know, people there don't always agree, that people in Russia don't agree with that, and they don't agree to the point that they're willing to to wage war over the territory um, uh, to, to make that point. So, I mean, it's a, none of that goes away. Um, yeah. with the strategy. No, the strategy doesn't deal with any of that. And there, there's an argument, of course, that it's the, the thing that sort of creates, the, that just totally destroys the incentive that Putin or anyone else would have to, to make Ill, illegal uh, invasions and incursions like this. Um, but th I just don't see any evidence for that because Putin um, is, he's taking losses and he's continuing to do it. If we could put up the, this next element too, then this is the, among the fallout from this, uh, top, you, top Zelensky advisor uh, resigned uh, in, in the wake of comments that he made. Basically what he said, he, he went on live television, he said that it looked like a missile had been intercepted, a Russian missile had been intercepted, mm -hmm. knocked off course and, and landed in this building, which is uh, the death toll is up to 44 at this point, including uh, five children. Mm. Whereas other officials, pushed back and said, no, uh, the, the evidence is that it was a direct hit from a, 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 a Russian battleship, uh, that, that the damage to the building shows that it was a direct hit rather than something, uh, something knocked off, off course. And so uh, the, uh, the advisor stepped down as a result of this, though I don't know if it's been conclusively shown um, what precisely happened. It's, uh, it's very, very difficult yeah. um, to say. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.